Uh, this is another one of my favorite tonics, uh, Burdock. This is a, kind of a, a barnyard and pasture side plant. That It's very common. Most people know it for the seed pods or the brown burrs, round burrs that come on at, in the fall. This one is a second year plant. It's a biennial. Uh, this is a second year plant and it's sending up flower stalks and it's so it'll be blooming. It gets a purple flower on it and then later the seed head that I mentioned. Uh, burdock is a very common weed. It look the leaves look somewhat like rhubarb. It's got a very large leaf. Uh, if you look at the underside, it's light colored. Uh, and this is uh, and there are very small hairs on here, so it's kind of fuzzy. And the petioles or leaf stem is red, reddish purple. So that's another way that you can pick this one out in the wild. So when you're harvesting this plant uh, for the roots, you want to get the first year plant in the fall or a second year plant in the spring. A good time to harvest roots is uh, after in the fall after frosty nights um, or in the spring when the uh, first leaves of the burdock emerge from the ground and they'll be it'll be a small clump. This is a tap root and what I the tool that I use to dig these up is a full size spade because the smaller spade that I use for um, wild crafting doesn't is not really uh, enough in this situation you need the full-size spade and you can dig up the tap root often you'll find some roots that are kind of finger width um, and smaller smaller and more tender and you can use those for food I like to make a, like a Japanese uh, salad out of those with uh, mixed with carrot and scallion and then you make a, a marinade for them with soy sauce and rice vinegar and sesame oil and that makes a really a really kind of nice um, wild food uh, side dish so the burdock medicinally is um, used as a tonic for all four chimneys of the body and the four chimneys of the body are ways um, that we uh, get rid of waste in the body. So the four chimneys are the skin, the lungs, uh, the kidneys, and the bowels. And burdock is a supreme tonic because it addresses all these four systems. So I use this one. I use burdock root as just kind of a food for the liver. It's just a very nourishing herb for that organ. Uh, we also use it um, as a food, like I mentioned, and often you'll see burdock used in a formula for people that have uh, skin ailments, like eczema or uh, psoriasis, uh, acne, and it's, it's really a good tonic for those people as well. The seeds of the burdock are harvested off the mature seed pods in the fall. And um, I use those as a thyroid medicine. They're specific for the thyroid. Burdock seed are, and then they're also used as a liver tonic, but I use them in a thyroid formula. So those are the two parts of this plant that I use. Well, in amongst the uh, angelica here, we have some burdock. In fact, it might, got a, might have gotten planted because I was digging here. So it looks worked up ground. And burdock is another bear medicine. We see the big leaves there which stands for the skin and the lungs, the, the perspiration and the um, gas exchange of the body are analogous to the um, the uh, transpiration function in the big leaves. So it's well known as a skin remedy. It's not as well known as a remedy for the Well, well, that gets real deep. <laughs> Good. We'll be able to get way down there and get a longer route that way. Hopefully. It's kind of hard to get. There's a soil column. 
Yeah, there was it. There it went. Breaking somewhere way down there. There it is. Brown, bittersweet root. Not quite furry. Maybe a little bit of fur up there by the stalk. Another bear medicine. Okay. The root is oily and um, sweet and bitter. And the seeds are somewhat similar. Not as oily, sweet and bitter. And also that diffusive tingle to them. So the properties are slightly different. The root is good for oil processes in the body. It stimulates the bile, gets the gallbladder going, and hence it's used in macrobiotic cooking as a side to help with digestion of fats and oils. Also in French cuisine it's used. Um, and it's rather a good tasting plant and nowadays under the name gobo it's become a rooty vegetable. And it tastes pretty good because it's bitter and sweet at the same time but enough sweetness to stop the, the bitterness from amounting to much. And then also it's oily, so it's very nutritious to the oil part of the body. And generally sweet and bitter plants are the most nutritious because uh, they get the saliva going, they act strongest on the digestive tract. So it uh, is good for the digestion, constipation, dryness, dryness of the skin. Uh, it's good for eczema, psoriasis, problems of the skin, acne, which are related to um, metabolism because it helps, once the oils go inside, it helps, fires up the oil pathway of the uh, of the liver, and therefore it helps metabolize waste products of, of uh, oily, fatty compounds around the body. And by breaking that down, it reduces heat. So it does not cause heat or stir up heat like some people think by firing up that pathway. It reduces heat because it gets rid of um, metabolic waste products or things that are going to waste. They're not waste products unless you don't use them. <laughs> if, you, if your body feeds on them, they're nutrients. So if they sit there, they can become waste products as well as the things that come out of your plant, out of your cell as waste products. So it cleanses the blood as we say. It's good for the bowels. It's in Chinese medicine. It's an oily root said the oil lubricates the bowels. It's actually the bile that lubricates the bowels because the bile reacts to the oil. Um, skin, liver, the seeds look a little like stones and therefore there's a signature there. A little bit better remedy for um, uh, kidney stones or kidney problems particularly. I don't know that we use it for kidney stones. But it's used for a dry system where the kidneys are wearing out, where the water's collecting and building up. And then it helps kick water through the kidneys. Also the emotions associated with this plant are worry clasping the hands and worry, doubt, which is kind of more a kidney emotion, fear, timorousness. Fear is a kidney emotion. Uh, I don't know that there's much more. Oh, it's an old menstrual remedy and it's a prostate remedy. So it's a womb and prostate remedy there. It's good for some prostate problems, especially my friend Margie Flint taught me about it. It's a good remedy for men that weight lift and blow out their prostate. It's uh, said Culpepper gives an old folk tradition, which is more widely known in Europe as well, which is that when you place it on the feet, it draws the womb down to cure hysteria or um, womb in the throat, the womb bounding up into the throat. That mean nervousness, hysteria, probably PMS. Or it can be placed on the navel to draw the womb up in prolapse. And I have had friends who've actually used it, placing it on or under the navel to draw the womb up works for prolapse. There's many remedies for pro prolapse. Um, that's most of what I know about it. It's a good utilitarian herb. Should be understood it's for heat and dryness, lack of oil. 
This is burdock, and some people might confuse burdock with rhubarb, and rhubarb leaves are poisonous, so that's a mistake you don't want to make. Burdock leaves are a little bit fuzzier, but they have this big heart shape uh, to them, and it's always a good idea to have a plant identifying book to make sure what you have is burdock. The part that's most often used of burdock is the root, and burdock root is a wonderful herb for helping to break up fatty deposits in the body, disperse them so they can be eliminated through the kidneys. The Latin name of burdock is Artium lapa, which means shaggy bear. And burdock root is one of my favorite herbs for skin ailments, things like eczema, acne, psoriasis. It's also a good herb to help lower cholesterol because of its ability to break down fatty deposits. Burdock root is edible as a food and it has a very long taproot. The great wild food expert of days gone by was Yule Gibbons, and Yule Gibbons used to say, burdock is so good for you because you get a full day's exercise digging it up. Now, the Japanese know that because it's so hard to dig up, they actually grow burdock in these troughs above the ground, and then when they want to harvest the burdock root, they just uh, open them up so they can easily take this plant. Burdock root, because it has such a long tap root, is said to be good for helping people feel more grounded. So if you're always forgetting your keys and wondering why you came into a room, my daughter calls that destinesia, maybe you want to think about using burdock root. It's delicious as a vegetable. I like to peel the root and grate it up and flavor it with some uh, tamari and a little olive oil or sesame oil. Burdock root also contains a starch called inulin, which is wonderful for helping to stabilize blood sugar levels. Now, one of the ways that you might be familiar with burdock is it has these burrs, and burdock burrs, they stick on your clothes, so in case you need a corsage for the prom and don't have a pin, you could use burdock burrs. But if you've ever experienced walking through the woods and coming home with burdock burrs sticking to your clothing, you'll know that many people consider this a bit of a bother, your dog's fur covered with burdock burrs. And years ago, the Swiss engineer, Georges de Mestray, noticed that his dog was covered with burdock burrs, and he went and got his little microscope, and he realized that the burdock burrs have little tiny curved hooks, and that led to the invention of Velcro. So if we're ever trying to figure out a way to do some new invention, realize that nature's probably figured out a way long ago. You can also use burdock as a plate. One time I was at a potluck dinner and no one said, bring your own plates. So here we are at this beautiful park with wonderful food. And I went and harvested 30 burdock plates and it makes wonderful biodegradable plates. One of the folk names for burdock is Thor's mantle. It has leaves sometimes large enough that you could use it as a raincoat or an umbrella. And the word burdock actually comes from the French word beurre, meaning butter, because years ago, when people didn't have saran wrap and Tupperware and glass jars, women would actually wrap their cakes of butter in the burdock leaves as a way to take it to the marketplace and keep it cool. If you are camping and you've forgotten your toothbrush, you could even use the stems of burdock for brushing and massaging your teeth and gums. So you have no excuse not to have great dental hygiene wherever you are. I'm standing here with the plant burdock and it's almost ready to flower. It's in its second year. It is a biannual plant, meaning that it has a lifespan of two years. And many people know this plant for its medicinal qualities of its root. Uh, the root is used in herbal medicine as an alterative, a plant that's used to help with skin afflictions and eczemas, dermatitis of all kind. It even has a, a use in herbal medicine for helping to fight some of the types of cancers that people uh, are trying to fight with herbal medicine. In pediatric medicine, you can use burdock root as a decoction. It's a little bit um, bitter and so many times it has to be sweetened with honey or, or uh, raw sugar or maple syrup or it can be used as a tincture for skin inflictions. How I like best to use it is I actually collect the, the leaf 
and the root and I, I chop it up and cut the leaf up into small pieces and chop the root up into small pieces and soak it in olive oil. And after about three or four weeks, I'll press that out. And I use it in my eczema, salves and oils for itchiness, any type of skin, dry skin where you have irritation and um, uh, swelling of the skin.